I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing one of the most chilling true crime books ever written. A Stranger, no, it's The Strain, The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. So we always talk about the covers, I mean... I mean, what can you say about this one? It's got Ted Bundy's, you know, killer eyes, his Manson eyes, his Bundy eyes. It's got those eyes right there. I think that's all we really need for the cover. A regular old font, and we're off and running. What is this book about? Well, it's about Ted Bundy. Told from the perspective of one of his best friends, Anne Rule. Anne Rule nowadays is known as one of the greatest true crime writers on the planet. She writes true crime stories about a lot of stuff, but she got her start writing this book, The Stranger Beside Me, about her best friend, Mr. Ted Bundy. How are they best friends? Let's go through this novel. It's going to be a little bit Spoiler filled, but not really. I'm just going to mention a few things that stuck out to me as very interesting parts of Ted Bundy's life. Things you will learn in this novel as you go, but I will be leaving out like 99% of the details. But I will be talking about a few things that I really, that struck me as interesting facts and interesting things about this guy. First off is Anne Rule herself. She was Ted Bundy's best friend. They worked the graveyard shift together for many years in Seattle. Their job was they were manning the Seattle suicide hotline. So she would sit in a cubicle and Ted Bundy would sit in a cubicle and they would take phone calls from suicidal people in the Washington state area and talk them out of killing themselves. Blows your mind. The irony is thick. You can't, I mean, if you tried to write a novel, and here's the thing about these true crime novels, and I work at the Utah State Prison, so I see a lot of criminals, I, I go over a lot of different cases, and I see a lot of criminals' backgrounds and histories, and, and how their crimes came to came about, and it's, and it's normally stuff you can't make up. It's just bizarre things, like if you were to put the stuff that these people do in a book, Just the wacky, crazy decisions they make. The crimes and how sideways and backwards and horrible the crimes go. If you were to put it in a novel, people would laugh at you because it's just not conceivable. It's, It's unrealistic. But every serial killer thing is is like that it's just unrealistic you can't i mean let's just take a look at the elizabeth smart she was kidnapped and paraded through the very streets where the cops were searching for her just wearing a veil people the fbi everybody in utah was searching for elizabeth smart and she was hiding in plain sight right in front of them if you were to put that in a, if you were to put the Elizabeth Smart story in a novel, it would never get published because people would be like, that is implausible. Everything about the Ted Bundy story is absolutely implausible. Here's a guy who attempted to escape from prison three times and actually escaped two of those times. That is unheard of. I work at the state prison. It is impossible to escape from a prison. This guy did it twice in three attempts. That's why his story is so chilling, is just because of all of the things that had to take place for this guy's crimes to come to fruition were astronomical. And a lot of it has to deal with um, technology. He couldn't have done it. If he'd have tried to be a serial killer nowadays, he couldn't have gotten away with it because there's too many people with cell phones too many people with cameras. There's cameras everywhere. You just can't get away. People are like, well, where are the, why are there no serial killers anymore? Well, it's because they usually get caught after the first or second murder because technology has caught up to the fact that these people, that we're all being tracked 24 hours a day by the cameras on every stoplight in our cities, by the cameras that everybody are p- taking. Our, I mean, everything is filmed. So you just can't. Back in the day, back in Ted Bundy's day, though, There was no such thing. 
Let's get back to Anne Rule. She's his good friend at the suicide hotline, right? And she starts hearing about all these gruesome murders happening in the Seattle area. She doesn't think that it's Ted Bundy. She would, I mean, that's the last thing she would ever think. Well, how was Ted Bundy getting away with this? Well, it was just what I talked about. It was the lack of technology. Ted Bundy, his MO was he, and he was married. He was married at the time. His MO was he would go around, he would put a fake cast on his arm, he would drive a Volkswagen bug with um, the passenger seat torn out, the back seat torn out, and he would have surfboards or skis or snowboards in the side where the passenger seat was. But what he would do is he would walk around with his cast on his arm, struggling to carry his surfboard or whatever, and he would just wait until a pretty girl came by and he would pop out of the car, pretend like he was struggling to put the surfboard in with his broken arm and, and ask the girl for help. In the middle of a busy parking lot, we're talking about, he would go, he would target public parks in Seattle that were full of people. Just full of people everywhere. Now, think about a public park today full of people. You're going to have cameras on every light post. You're going to have cameras at every stoplight around that. You're going to have everybody with a cell phone camera snapping selfies and photos. So there's no, I mean, you'd get caught. I mean, you'd get caught nowadays. But back in the day, they didn't have any of that. So he was able to snatch these women out of broad daylight in a busy parking lot just by asking them to help him put the surfboard in the car. And he would snatch them up because, of course, they would help. They would see this good-looking guy with a broken arm and trying to get his surfboard. And they would help. And, and that was the end of them. And it just was going on and on and on. One, one missing girl after the next in Seattle. Well, Ted Bundy was doing this all across the West. I mean, he traveled all over. He ended up in Salt Lake City, going to the University of Utah. He quit his job there in uh, Seattle. Ended up going to Salt Lake City to, to the University of Utah, and this is where things go bad for him. This is where his where this is where the jig is kind of up for him. So he's a lot of women go missing in Utah. So now Utah's oh my gosh, there's a serial killer in Utah. A lot of women are missing. Well, what happens is Ted Bundy tries to snatch a girl. He this time he pretends he's a policeman in the busiest shopping mall. I know where the shopping mall is that he did this. The Fashion Place Mall, right in downtown, right in the middle of the Salt Lake Valley, the busiest shopping mall. He tried to court, he tried to pretend that he was a police officer. Tried to get a girl to get in his car because hey, we heard that there was some shoplifting going on. We need to, you know, in investigate you. And, but the girl got away. The girl was like, no, this ain't right. She got away. Well, what happened was a few months later, Ted Bundy was driving through West Valley, Utah with his bug in his little Volkswagen, the seats, the seat taken out, all of the, all the paraphernalia ready. He's got the, the duct tape and the rope and everything ready for the kidnapping. And a West Valley police officer pulls him over for some reason and then notices the, um, the weird setup of the car. And he's like, well, this is bizarre. And Ted Bundy's acting nervous. And so anyway, Ted Bundy gets arrested. They put Ted Bundy in a lineup because they think this guy might be our serial killer. He's got all the trappings in his car of a serial killer. They put him in a lineup and they bring this girl in from the shopping mall that Ted Bun that escaped from Ted Bundy. And they said, had him in a lineup with a bunch of other men and said, this is you see the man here that tried to kidnap you? She said, yes, it was that guy, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy end up, ends up in the Utah State Prison. I work at the Utah State Prison. Now, he was there in 1978, a long time before I was there. Well, Ted Bundy was in the prison for several years there in Utah, and he tried to escape, and he, he, he barely made it. He barely got caught. I mean, he barely got caught. I know exactly where he was trying to escape from. He had bolt cutters and everything. And I know the setup of that prison. And I know the exact spot he was trying to escape from. It was a brilliant spot. He almost did it. But he got caught. Meanwhile, in Aspen, Colorado, is investigating a lot of missing women of their own. Because Ted Bundy, even though he lived in Salt Lake and Seattle, he would take road trips and, and kidnap women. Grand Junction, Colorado. Everywhere. I mean, he was kidnapping people up in Idaho, Colorado, Aspen, Colorado, everywhere. He was kidnapping people and killing them. Aspen, Colorado is like, we think this Ted Bundy that's in Utah might be the serial killer 
that's killed and kidnapped a lot of people in Aspen, Colorado. So they take, so Colorado takes Ted Bundy up to Aspen, Colorado, to the county jail there. And Ted Bundy escapes from that jail twice. And I'll let you read those two escape attempts because they're the highlights of the book almost because just how clueless and the Utah State Prison officials say, hey, this guy's an escape risk. You might, you might want to keep your eye on him. They didn't keep their eye on him at all. They just, they didn't, they treated him like he was their best friend. Just let him have the run of the place. And he escaped twice. And this is about when the time that Ted Bundy started to get famous, where people were starting to think this guy might be the serial killer up in Seattle, up in everywhere. And then Ann Rule is like, she sees his mug on the face and she, on the TV now, national TV, and she's like, that's my friend from the suicide hotline. And so she, she is now interested in this, and so she starts doing her own research, and which leads to this book. Well, Ted Bundy escapes from Aspen, Colorado jail twice. The first time he lives in the mountains for a couple weeks, and they eventually corral him and capture him. The second time he escapes, he actually gets away and goes and is vanished. And I remember when I was a kid and this happened. When, when on the news every night, it was about Ted Bundy, the serial killer, has escaped the prison and he's vanished into thin air. People were freaked out. Absolutely freaked out. And then a lot of s women started going missing in Florida. I mean, if, if, you, if you follow his escape from the Aspen, Colorado jail, the second time he steals, he actually steals the warden's car. And the warden's clothes. <laughs> That's as much as that escape attempt as I'm going to... Because it is a great escape attempt. It is a great story. And I want you to read it. But he actually steals the warden's clothes, the warden's car, drives it to Chicago, leaves it in a parking lot, catches a train to Florida, sets up shop down in Florida, and starts his serial killing all again. And then we've got missing people in Florida and the southeast... And they have, and it eventually catches up to him in Florida, and that is eventually where he is put to death. He's put on death row in Florida and eventually killed by Florida Department of Corrections. And it's all in this book, and I am just hitting the tip of the iceberg on this guy, folks. Just the deviousness and how he outsmarted and outfoxed almost everybody along the way. Even the police that had him right in their grasp, he would get away from them. And he would, he would just out, he would, he, because he was such a normal looking, charming dude that the, they were like, I think it might be Ted Bundy, but this guy seems so cool. You know, I mean, I don't know if I should really arrest him for being Ted Bundy because he's just, you know, I mean, it's just bizarre. It's bonkers. You just can't, you, it is the quintessential greatest crime novel ever written probably right up there with in cold blood by truman capote and helter skelter this one i think this one i was more interested in this one than the other two so if you want to read one of the most harrowing gripping chilling sad heartbreaking mind-boggling journeys told by Ted Bundy's best friend, Anne Rule. Oh, and just her journey through the whole thing. Her coming to terms with it. Her coming to grips with it. Her trying to rationalize. And, and I mean, you know, it's just a great, great story. I mean, if, if and, and writing advice, folks, if you're writers, you got to read stuff like this if you're a writer, because this is how you get into the psychology of, of dark characters is by reading this kind of stuff. Stranger Beside Me. I give this thing a 10 out of 10. It is dope. <laughs>